Megan Woods. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We've, we've heard from many people about why it is um, there might be a good reason for the government wanting to rush this legislation through. As a member of the committee that this legislation is trying to be rushed through, I'd like to take a call on this. And I'd like to echo my colleague Gareth Hughes' call for someone on the government benches to stand up, to take a call, and to tell us why it is that they are proceeding with undue haste. As my colleague Chris Farfoy has been reminding me beside me, there is no dignity in haste. And we have absolutely no explanation from members opposite why it is that they want to proceed with such haste. This is a bill that Labor was willing to support. And in our substantive speeches, and I'm not going to stray into the substantive, substantive parts of the legislation, Mr Speaker, but in our substantive speakers, all members on this side foreshadowed some very serious questions that we wanted to see answered at Select Committee. And to deny that opportunity for this Parliament to go through its process and have those questions examined by the people who have real expertise is an absolute travesty. This, getting this right, getting this legislation right, is a delicate balance. It's a delicate balance of the scientific community, industry and government working together. So far, this whole process in setting up the ATI has been weighted in favour of the government. The select committee process is the very part of the process where it is that science and industry could come together to make sure that the outcomes that we're all seeking from the establishment of this institute can be achieved. We have no ability to answer the very serious questions in a meaningful way that were raised in this debate. If we can compare the setting up of the ATI with the setting up of the CRIs 20 years ago, this is a hugely speedy process. Setting up and dismantling the, the DSIR and setting up the CRIs as a consequence of that dismantling was a process that was hugely consultative. There was input from a large range of people. And why is it that the government is trying to deny the process and the opportunity to have that consultation and to have people to input into it? We just are more than a little perplexed on this side of the House. We're dealing with a piece of legislation that is going to transfer people's employment. We're dealing with people's jobs. We're dealing with the way in which science is done. And these, this isn't just tinkering around the deck chairs, tinkering around the edges. The legislation, there is no need to be changing this. What this legislation is doing is creating IRL as a sub subsidiary of a new Crown entity in transferring some of the functions of the Ministry of Business and Innovation and Employment to it. Why is it that you'd need to proceed with haste? There is nothing that is currently being done that, ca that that is going to be done within this new organisation that can't be done till this new entity called the ATI is put in place. The, haste, the reason for haste just does not exist. And as my colleague David Cunliffe has already alluded to, what we've seen from government members throughout the, 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 the history of the ATI sort of being suggested is some rush to the finish line by government that we don't understand, which is casting serious doubt on why it is the government really wants to push this through and whether this is something we should be supporting. We saw Treasury having to put the brakes on the Ministry of Science and Innovation in their papers and in, 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 the, in the budget documents because Treasury knew that MSI was putting together a timeline that was simply unachievable. So there we have it, that Treasury put the brakes on it so why now is this Parliament trying to speed up that process, deny proper process and deny the opportunity to get the very best outcome that we could? We've, he we've, he we've heard from many members on this side of the House that, that are affronted that people with real knowledge
knowledge, real expertise and a real ability to input into the creation of this ATA are being denied their voice, denied their ability to have a say. And what it is, is we would like to hear more from the Minister on why this is. He is remaining strangely silent. Members of the Education and Science Select Committee from the Government side are also very silent on this question. I'd like to hear from the Chair Nikki Kay on why it is that this legislation is being rushed through that committee. Because I would like to point out to members of this House who might not be aware that actually this is, the, I think, the first piece of legislation that this committee has had to consider this term. It's not like it is a committee that has been rushed off its feet in terms of examining legislation. The need to rush this through just does not make sense. Something doesn't stack up and we would like government members to take a call. Is it because there's going to be all of a sudden, for lack of legislation going through this committee, is there all of a sudden going to be a need to push through other legislation in this committee? For example, are we going to have to get the charter schools legislation through at breakneck speed as well? So this is the kind of considerations that we have to have. What is the real agenda of why it is the people's voice is being denied to have real input. In my speech, when I, when I talked about this legislation, again, Mr Speaker, I won't be delving into the substantive parts of the legislation, I talked about this actually being an important moment in our history and it being absolutely vital that we got it right. And I made that statement with real gravity. It is something that I believe personally and it's something that I believe passionately, that if we don't get this right, our economic future is not assured and the only way we will get it right is having the people that work in industry, the people that work in science, to give them the opportunity to have their say. I do not think that officials and parliamentarians are the only people that it can put input into this. I am affronted that members opposite have the arrogance to think that those that work at the coalface have nothing to input into how this is going to play out. Because I, for one, want to hear what they have to say. I think these are the people that will actually have some real and meaningful things to input into this. But still, we have stunned silence from members opposite, and not one one mention of why it is. We just want to know why the undue haste. We just have blank looks and members of us are unable to even look at us when we're asking this question because they don't have an answer. It is an affront to this House and it is not the reason I came into it. I came in this House to represent people and to have people to have genuine input into legislation. It's all very well for members of us to sledge across the House how about they get to their feet, take a call and tell us why it is they are denying people the right to have input into their legislation. It is very important that we do have scientists, scientists that know lots of things like about H2O and water to have an input. So Mr Speaker, I really do urge people to have some kind of input in, into this. I urge members opposite to take a call, tell us why it is but more than anything, I ask that we do not rush this very important moment through the select committee process. It's too important. Uh, Jackie Dean. I move that